y'all. Happy Easter. I hope y'all are doing well. Um, something that's just been weighing on my heart, and this is part of the light and heavy conversations. Uh, these are topics and things that are weighing heavy on my heart that are just rattling and rolling in my brain that I want to get out and kind of discuss that um, kind of, you know, that impacts the culture and the Catholic faith, but not necessarily directly towards pilgrimages. And today's topic, as you saw in the thumbnail, is about large families. And basically in the last couple of weeks, in a very rapid succession, I started seeing a lot of people talk to me about, um, or I overheard people talking about kids and families and things like that. And in particular, I one day I was working in my office and I overheard some people talking. It was some uh, construction workers and uh, basically, long story short, paraphrasing, they were saying, oh, two kids, that that's plenty. Like, two's enough. I remember one guy was saying that. I was like, oh, two's enough, two's enough. And I was like, man, I, I just kind of feel bad that he feels like more than two and, and that's crazy right? Or, you know, that's too much. Now, again, before I continue on, I just want to preface that by no means am I trying to say that those that only have, you know, a couple of kids or are unable to conceive a child, by any means are they less uh, than any other family out there. Uh, I come from a household, I'm one of two. I have a younger brother. Um, uh, my wife, she's one of three. So, you know, we're not coming from very large families, but um, there's there there seems to be this push of, of only have like if you have more than two now, you're seen as like, whoa, um, going back again, the um, I was given a tour to a group and Stanley Rother, he comes from a family of uh, technically five. Uh, he was the oldest of five. One of his sisters died uh, one day after she was born. So he grew up uh, with four or three other siblings. He was one of four uh, throughout his life. And I, when I was given this tour, uh, one of the elderly ladies was walking by and just very, as a matter of fact, and very confident to say, like, I'm so glad that, uh, you know, we've gone to smaller families, smaller households. Uh, and not as many kids. And it, I don't know, just, and this happened, like these two events happened two days apart. And just hearing that and the mentality, just, it broke my heart because, um, you know, I don't know if y'all know this, but as even though the overall number of our population in the world, continue, it is climbing, um, our birth rate, uh, the number of births we're having across the globe uh, are shrinking fast. Uh, we, for the first time, are not at replacement rate in throughout many, 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 many countries throughout the world. And uh, I feel, you know, we're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. At least that's what I remember reading in sacred scripture and what the Lord commanded us to do. And the other part, the other purpose, too, is the understanding of the vocation of marriage. And again, this idea of marriage is meant for just me and this like selfishness. But, you know, the whole purpose of marriage is for the bonding, the union of the two becoming one flesh with my wife, but then also to that if it's God's will that we have children and that we're open to that life and open to as many children as we possibly can. Now, I'm very blessed. You know, we have four children now and three in heaven. And I've discussed, um, you know, our battles with infertility and loss uh, of our children due to miscarriage on this channel. And we've been very open, my wife and I, about our journey because for the first five years of our marriage, we couldn't even conceive a child. And we were just uh, just you know, praying every single month that we could have a child. And there's, again, I, I'm not trying to uh, speak ill of anybody that, uh, you know, prays and, and cannot or, you know, for valid reasons, you know, need to refrain from having children and abstaining uh, during that time of the month uh, to, you know, not not have another children or to grow the families. But I just it it makes me kind of almost baffled that when people talk to me and they'll hear that I have four kids, they they immediately are like, "Whoa, oh my gosh, that's a you got a big family, you got your hands full." And 
yeah, I mean, we've got our hands full. I mean, my wife does like 99% of the work, um, but it's the understanding that we love our children. And sorry, going back, I'm kind of jumping all around here. Um, like I said, this has been mulling in my head for a couple of weeks. Um, I just, I think, especially what got me was when they said like, it's good that we don't have larger families or, you know, two's enough. Like, I can't imagine my life without my third daughter. Like, her energy, her spunk, her personality, but just who she is. Um, you know, I can't imagine not having my son now, my fourth, uh, finally having that boy. You know, a lot of people say, oh, well, then y'all must be done now. You got your boy. And I'm like, well, I, I don't know. I. It's not up for me to decide that, that that's God. And if he blesses us with another child and that, and, and that's the other thing too, is I, I don't mean that those words flippantly. I genuinely mean, is the Lord blessing us with the child? That children are an immense blessing in our life because they are the reason and they're the whole purpose of how I became a man because I didn't understand what being a man was until I started having children, until I understood that I need to sacrifice and die to myself, suck it up and get to work and do all the things that I a lot of times don't want to do. And they help me do that. They help me grow out of my selfishness, out of my own ego, out of my own pride, and also realize that they are a mirror a reflection of the man that I am. And if I want them to be good human beings and people growing up that I need to reflect that and instill that into them. And I guess one of the last things I want to share is the story of St. Catherine of Siena and how she was the youngest of 25 children. <laughs> I just can't believe that. I mean, when I read that story years ago, I was like, wait, 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 was that a typo? Tw 25 children, her she gave birth, her mother gave birth to 25 kids. Now, sadly, many of them did not survive past childhood. But imagine if her parents said, you know, we, we've had, we have more than enough and we've, we've lost a lot of children. I think we're done. We wouldn't have an amazing saint in St. Catherine of Siena, a former Dominican one of the best quotes in all of the church. If you are who you call to be, you will set the world ablaze. And she did. She received the stigmata. She received uh, visions. Uh, and she, you know, had very intimate conversations with Christ. It, just on and on and on. But just going back to her personal life and, and her family, just imagine if they said, you know, we've had enough kids or, you know, St. Therese, or I can go down the list of the number of not just saints, but just inventors and athletes and all the number of people that, you know, came from large families and they were the youngest. And imagine if their parents just said, you know, I, I we're done and, and what the world would be like without them. And so every life is precious. Every gift of life is a blessing and you know whether you are you know come from a family of 10 or a family of one um, you are a blessing and families uh, certainly should come in all shapes and sizes but I think we need to bring back uh, the not so crazy thought of having large families again that uh, it's not taboo because it wasn't that long ago that, you know, a family of eight was considered normal. It was like, oh yeah, of course. Now, if you have more than two, it's crazy, like I said earlier. So anyways, I'm rambling now. Thank you so much for listening. If you've listened to me this long, um, I've got several videos coming up and uh, on the Blessed Stanley Rother Shrine and a bunch of other videos because I'm closing in on 100 episodes officially. I know I've done over 100 videos, but 100 uh, episodes. I'm really looking forward to hitting that milestone with all of you. Thank you so much for all these people, these new uh, subscribers. It just, it, it's so humbling that you would click that subscribe button. Uh, remember to like and leave a comment down below. Let me know, you know, what kind of family dynamics did you have? Did you come from a large family? Did you come from a small family? Are you the oldest or the youngest? You know, uh, if God's calling you to the vocation of marriage or, you know, 
have you really you know stopped and think about uh, the fa the family dynamics because uh, it's really vital uh, to talk about those things early on even before you get married so that way you and your spouse have a very a firm understanding of where y'all stand and, and purpose uh, in your marriage. I think that'll do it for this episode. Happy Easter again. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and your families.